All of these except the panoramas and the star trail are single images. Okay. And that's sort of by philosophy. And, and, and I mean, I just carry over from photojournalism days where the, I mean, you and I know that the, the content and the image was sacred, that you were, you shot one picture and that was it. Right. Uh, and so to, to, to me that, that I kind of approach it as with the documentary approach to, uh, to photographing and trying to think, I try to think, well, what does the scene look like? What, what am I experiencing? And then how do I tell that story in a natural way so that someone who, who can't go there for whatever reason, can't go to these places, uh, uh, can understand what the, the, the sky and the landscape look, look like in a naturalistic way. And that dark band that you see where the moon is, uh, is the shadow of the earth that the, the sun is projecting the shadow of the earth onto our atmosphere because uh, it's it's right below the horizon so the sun is setting as as the moon is rising uh, this is on the i think this is on the evening of the full moon uh, so at that at that time it was uh it, it just worked out where you could see both the sun and the moon at the same time so i rushed to get two sets of images and this 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 one set worked out pretty well. And there's a set of observatories uh, that's not part of the National Park on the top of Haleakala, uh, kind of similar to what's on uh, uh, Mauna Kea on the Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, and then the, uh, so they, before I got there, they put me in touch with someone who works with the University of Hawaii because they, they administer the whole area. Uh, I told him what I was doing, and he said, "Oh yeah, we could get you on to the observatory area because it's not it's not open to the public." And then uh, so he gave, basically gave me the combination to the big lock at the front gate, so I could come in like at midnight and shoot pictures to early hours of the morning. So that was fun. Now, you've probably seen star trails looking toward the North Star, yeah. rotating around the North Star. So. Uh, does the same thing if you look look south. It's just that we we can't see the southern celestial pole because it's below the below our horizon. Well, below the equator, obviously. And so, uh, but the the effect is the same where you see the arc of stars essentially rotating around the southern uh, a southern southern pole. And uh, to me, this is sort of funny because it, it's a couple. It's a composite of. A whole bunch of pictures, the equivalent of about one hour of exposure. So it's shorter exposures that I uh, that I just combine together, and the the streaks along the uh, mountain are are cars. I, I started shooting right after sunset, and uh, people look at the sunset. They get in their cars and they race down the mountain because they got to go to dinner or go back to their hotels. <laughs> the top of Haleakala is is just over ten thousand feet. And then this uh, particular, once you get into the crater, you're at about six, maybe a little over 6,000 feet in, that, in that elevation. Uh, but you're in a bowl, uh, and so you hear wind, uh, and you hear these birds. There are birds that nest along the walls of the crater that you actually hear uh, sometimes quite loudly in the middle of the night. I use the moon to illuminate the landscape in a, in a lot of the pictures. Uh, so I, I could see the landscape uh, dimly. Uh, and of course, the, the, when it was clear, it was, it was just horizon to horizon star.